And we just mentioned that one of the reasons boron prefers to have fewer than eight electrons is to maintain a neutral charge at the boron atom. And what we're going to do now is introduce a concept that allows us to assign a charge to each atom within a Lewis structure. It's called formal charge. And it is the hypothetical charge that an atom would have if all of the bonding electrons in the molecule were split evenly between the two atoms involved in the bond. So to calculate formal charge, we can think about mentally splitting each bond and counting the number of electrons around each atom, comparing that to the number of electrons in the free atom when neutral to determine the formal charge. There's also a formula that really encapsulates this mental process of splitting the electrons, and that formula is shown here. To calculate the formal charge, we first determine the number of valence electrons in the free atom when neutral, and this comes from the position on the periodic table, right? Group one has one, group two has two, group 13 has three, et cetera, et cetera. We subtract the number of non-bonding electrons next. And of course, for each non-bonding electron sitting on that atom, we get a negative one charge. That's why we subtract that number of non-bonding electrons. And then we take only half of the bonding electrons associated with that atom. Half because we're splitting that bond down the middle and giving half of the electrons to the atom whose formal charge we're interested in. So the valence electrons in the free atom minus the non-bonding electrons minus half of the bonding electrons is going to give us the formal charge. And this will typically either be neutral, this is very, very common, and this is mostly what we've seen so far, negative one or positive one. In covalent molecules of main group elements, it's very rare for formal, formal charges to be greater than plus or minus one. It does come up occasionally, plus or minus two, plus or minus three is pretty much off limits. One other thing to mention about formal charge. So every atom in a Lewis structure has a formal charge. So if you're applying this formula in a very systematic way, it can get a little long-winded to determine the formal charges of all the atoms in a molecule. One little shortcut that you can use to shorten the process a little bit is to appreciate the conservation of charge, that if a molecule is, say, neutral overall, the sum of the formal charges in that molecule must be equal to zero. So once you've determined all of the formal charges but one, if you know the overall charge of the molecule, you also know that last missing formal charge. Keep this in mind to save you a bit of time when assigning formal charges. And if, for example, you're sure all the atoms in a molecule are neutral, but the molecule is anionic overall, you know that last atom you're not sure about has a charge of negative one. That can save you some effort. Let's practice with formal charges by assigning formal charges to each atom in the interhalogen ion, ICl4 minus. So here's the formula for ICl4 minus. It's an anion overall. And let's start by drawing the Lewis structure. That's gonna be a first step here. So we count up our valence electrons. We get seven from the iodine and seven each from the four chlorines. We get one additional valence electron due to the negative charge. And this comes to a total of 36 electrons. In terms of drawing the sigma skeleton, I is less electronegative than Cl. So it makes sense to put I at the center and surround that iodine with the four chlorines. And we'll go ahead and throw the negative charge in the top right there. There's our sigma skeleton. We've made four bonds here, so we've taken account of eight electrons. This leaves us with 28 electrons remaining, and to account for those, I'm going to put three pairs around each chlorine to satisfy the octet rule on each of the chlorines. If you count this up, we still have four electrons left, and because we've satisfied the octet rule on the chlorines, we don't want to mess with those anymore, so we're going to take those four electrons and put them on the central iodine atom, and this is a valid Lewis structure for ICL4 minus. Now, one thing to point out is this molecule involves an exception to the octet rule. So while we have octets on all of the chlorines, the iodine is actually violating the octet rule. Let's count the electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons total around the iodine. So it's violating the octet rule. This is an example of a hypervalent molecule. Now, what about the formal charges? Well, let's apply this idea of taking the number of valence electrons in the neutral atom and subtracting the number of non-bonding electrons and half the number of bonding electrons. So if we look, for example, at the chlorine first, neutral chlorine as a free atom has seven valence electrons. 
I see six non-bonding electrons around the chlorine in the form of these green dots. And the chlorine is involved in one bond, which means it has one bonding electron that goes into this, or one half times two. Seven minus six minus one half times two comes down to zero. The chlorines are neutral. And that same analysis applies to the three other chlorines as well. Let's apply the formula to the iodine at the center. You may have an idea about what the formal charge must be given what we just determined, but let's apply that formula pretty systematically first. Seven valence electrons in a neutral iodine atom. I see four non-bonding electrons in blue here and here. I've got four bonds to the iodine, eight bonding electrons, total four single bonds. So one half times eight, we're gonna subtract out as well. And this comes out to negative one. So the formal charge on that iodine atom is negative one. And we can represent that by placing a little negative symbol, typically with a circle around it, just to distinguish this from a smudge on the paper to indicate that the iodine is negatively charged. Note, however, that we didn't need to apply the formula to that iodine because as soon as we recognize that all the chlorines were formally neutral, that means that the iodine must have a formal charge of negative one, since the molecule overall has a charge of negative one. That's conservation of charge in action. 